All right, buckle up, folks. It is going to be a bumpy one. The uh, the camera has not been fucking cooperating. Let, uh, let's take a look and see if the audio is cooperating. Well, you enjoy these uh, appropriately dressed women in hijabs by the pool there. I'm going to take a look at this. Hopefully the camera fucking behaves itself. Oh, boy, yeah. This the show almost did not launch this evening. Looks like we are good. All right, there we go. Okay then. Um, yeah, take a gander at these ladies while I go through the usual. Uh, ba ba. Might have a pre-record next week. It's the summer. I have no idea. You know social gatherings pop up i might have to go to a friend's uh, thing out in the suburbs um i might have something going on around here so i will do my darndest to make sure that there is content for next friday i just cannot promise that it will be live um if you do want to watch all of that and this uh, at mike's golden streams on youtube or just search for sack tap live and uh give me uh, give me a shout on social media uh, twitter at mike montone Instagram at Gary underscore Moiler, M-O-Y-L-E-R, and uh, Facebook.com slash The Savage Crew. Um, you can find the podcast, the audio version, available uh, wherever podcasts can be downloaded. So if you prefer not to uh, to watch the video version for whatever reason, you want to listen to it while you, you drive around and, you know, do whatever it is you do. Fucking splash puddles of water at old ladies walking down the street. Fucking peep at children, you sick fucks. Whatever it is, whatever it is you're up to, you want to listen to fucking Savage Sack Tap while you're doing it. Uh, yeah, enjoy. Uh, I think uh, is that that we just ready to get going. Okay, good, good, good. Uh, be careful crossing the street in Manhattan. You might get stabbed to death by a homeless ex-con, and no one is going to do a thing about it. You're better off becoming one of those incels who sits around edging and playing video games all day. Let's take a look at what's creating the next generation of supreme gentlemen, and let's take a look at Bud Light's new pandering chicken fried commercial. It's all coming up in a fresh episode of Sack Tap Live, and it starts right now. You're listening to the Savage Sack Tap. It's not a podcast. It's not a half cast. It's just a quick shot to the balls to help you finish off the week. We're cutting through the bullshit, filling your Friday with rage fueled logic, and cracking a few jokes along the way. So grab a bag of frozen peas. There's a savage sack tap coming your way. Smooth, lascivious, salacious, outrageous. Woo! Woo! Um. Good evening. Good evening. I'm Mike Montone. This is the Savage Sack Tap, Sack Tap Live, if you will. Nighttime Conqueror, good to see you here. Um, and nobody else, all by your lonesome. How about that? Well, your patronage is very much, very much appreciated, my friend. Um, I'm going to take a sip of some tart cherry. Ah, there we go. Uh, I was thinking before I did this, right before I was getting ready to do the show, oh, it's been such an uneventful week commuting into the city, but I always have the uh, I always have the local news on at four o'clock on a Friday. That's just kind of, I put, I always put the local news on and I watch local New York City news from four until 6.30 when they all flip over to the network um, because I just, I love... I love watching local news because it's it's just such fucking garbage usually. Um, you know, it, there'll, there'll be, it's just fucking, it's an hour of stories about people being inconvenienced at small businesses and then like a, a feature on, you know, some a Latinx woman opening a fucking, a, a puppy you know fashion studio or some some such fucking shit that's what that's what the local news is but every once in a while you also get you get acts of horrific violence too it's it's fun um and that's what i uh i took notice of 
this evening because it was a quiet week. I usually always open the show with talk of what's going on at the Port Authority and this nut job and that guy and vagrants and, and all of that. Um, and it, it was, it was a quiet week for me because a, some chick did get thrown in front. I think a couple of people got thrown in front of trains. Uh, but I didn't really have, there wasn't much new, nothing really grabbed me. And what a city when people can get thrown in front of trains and it's not grabby enough to talk about. And then I hear about this guy getting stabbed to death in uh, the middle of the street in, in Chelsea, no less where the fabulous crowd brunches. Um, Let me get, I got to get the picture up. Actually, I forgot. There's, I have, there's a series of pictures and they are fucking wild. Let me get these broads out of here. There they go. Because I'm going to need that space to show you this gentleman being brutally stabbed. Um, at the first one, there's a series of pictures. Okay, here. So this is the actual fight going down. This is the the fight. This is the stabbing. This is in the middle of an intersection, Seventh Ave and Thirtieth uh, Street, like the, the heart of midtown, fucking midtown Manhattan. This is New York City. Um, a man was stabbed to death during a wild broad daylight brawl um, in the middle of a Chelsea crosswalk where they fought it out as grizzled New Yorkers strolled casually by the mayhem, according to video uh, of the incident. Yeah, that's what I'm, that's what I'm saying about uh, this when I go to work every day is that it's just, just going on around you shit like this. And this is anyone who commutes into the city could have come across this. The fight broke out just before 8.15 a.m. in the busy crossing at West 30th and 7th Ave. That is like fucking when you see uh, those big shots of New York City in the movies, 7th Ave is like a perfect one for them. This this intersection would be in like a, a John Hughes movie or something like that where they're, you know, they got big shoulder pads on and they're all, they're all commuting to work with their briefcases. Um, and you know that uh, there are all sorts of, of fun holiday antics await. Um, well, what's the one where uh, Dustin Hoffman, uh, he play he, he cross-dresses at Tootsie? Is that it? Where they show like, you know, you know, businesswoman walking a fucking uh, uh, work in the 1980s. Uh, that's where they, they get these shots in neighborhoods like West 30th and 7th Ave. Um, so this is, I mean, this is just 8.15 AM is the fucking work starts at nine. This is the height of the morning rush in midtown Manhattan. And we have, we have a shirtless guy, a huge size disadvantage, by the way. Um, a, about to get viciously stabbed, uh, by a, a much larger gentleman. Um, and this, you, anyone, this, this could, this could be anyone's commute in the morning is just having to cross this street. Like you have to get across this street. Your office is on the other side. Got to get there. You're walking past a stabbing. Um, and you see the. Uh, the lead up to this happening all the time. It doesn't always result in this, but every once in a while you do get to witness like the actual altercation or the arrest from it. Like this isn't, this isn't a shock. Like that's what this story, the story is less about the stabbing than it is the fact that people were just strolling by on their way to the office. Like people were walking by and listening to fucking, you know, some guy in a, a, a button down a collared shirt with a, a Patagonia vest over it was crossing the street, listening to fucking Jocko Willink, um, you know, getting ready. He's go, he's getting ready to go into the, the corporate office and he needs to listen to a former Navy, <laughs> Navy seal to, to get ready for the day. Um, but this is, 
this is it. Like if you're a 95 pound chick and you like it's intern season. So there are like, there are all these very scared looking college kids walking around the city now um, uh, because I don't think they realized that, you know, part of going, part of doing an internship in New York city was going to involve walking around guys like doing needle drugs on the stairs and shitting on the sidewalk, or in this case, stabbing each other to death. Um, but you hear the, the lead up to this going on all the fucking time guys will just be jawing at each other remember last uh last show i did uh, i was talking about the uh the bathroom attendant arguing with that one guy and then the guy threatening to shoot him uh so this is not the story has become it's the amazing thing about this is that the, the story here is not that someone was stabbed to death in the middle of the sidewalk the story that is being told now is that People are being stabbed to death in the middle of the sidewalk and fucking normal people are just walking around it like it's a slight inconvenience. Like it's a there. People are treating a a a crosswalk stabbing like they're walking behind a person who's looking down at their phone and being a little bit slow. They're just like, oh, we'll loop around, loop, loop around. <laughs> um. One woman, one idiot, apparently um, tried to get in between the men um, and and told them not to fight. They, they of course, didn't listen. Uh, moments later, the shirtless 36-year-old can be seen in the video later bleeding the crosswalk with cops frantically trying to save the man's life. Um, the other man, identified by cops as Nishon Graves was taken into custody and charged with murder Friday afternoon. And this is um this is really the icing on the cake with these things. Again, uh New York City 2020. Let me uh get another fucking I have another image from it that I want. This is really it. This is really the, this is the picture that did it for me. Is this fucking old lady. She's walking by just looking at her phone while these two square up against each other. And one of them has a, he has the blade is out. Like the, the stabbing is getting ready to commit. They've put their, their things down on the ground here. And, um, they are now whatever has whatever has transpired between them will now be solved via trial by combat. And the guy, the shirtless guy, lost. He's dead. Um, the guy who did it, this uh, what's his name, Nishon Graves, say his name. Um, a 34-year-old homeless man. Well, I'm not sure I like them describing him as homeless. Can't we Can't we just call him unhoused? Uh, attacked a person in May 2021 in Lower Manhattan, stabbing the victim in both arms, according to a criminal complaint. A uh, judge sentenced him to a year in jail in June 2021 after copping to one count of third-degree assault. He's also a registered sex offender who served nine years in prison for attempted rape, prison records show. So... Um, if, uh, if you're the parent of a college so young woman in college and she's, she tells you that she's interning for, uh, you know, Merrill Lynch or whatever in, in Manhattan and she's going into Midtown, this is what your daughter is walking by every day. There is a, um, a, a convicted an attempted rapist, in my opinion, is just a rapist, right? You just, just because you didn't succeed, you're still, you're a rapist. Um, a, uh, there is a, a rapist who goes around stabbing people is just, he's out, he's out and about in the, uh, in the main business district where your daughter will be commuting every day, uh, in, in the warmer months, probably wearing a sundress. So that's good. That's comforting. But, you know, ah. Uh. It's a hell of a town. Um, 
Oh, there was there was one thing that I did that I did find entertaining on my walk in, and I will uh, I'll move on after this. That fucking now you're in New York uh, Empire State of Mind song was playing out. I I guess there were some tourists who you know it's tour it's the summer it just gets over the summer and Christmas time it just overflows, um, and. You know, the verses of that song are very, they're very uplifting and they make New York seem like this incredible place. They, the verses, I don't think there's a verse in that song, although it does mention some of the grittier aspects of the city. Um, it still kind of makes, uh, makes you feel safe going to New York. Um, so long as you don't go out of your way to delve into its many vices it doesn't at any point um, mention an elderly woman having to step out of the crosswalk because a, a rapist is about to stab a shirtless man to death. Um, but um, that song was playing. These tourists were blasting it out of one of those little fucking portable uh, Bluetooth boom boxes. And I'm walking, this is on 42nd Street, walking towards Times Square away from the Port Authority. And there's just a fucking, like, a homeless guy in soiled clothing hobbling down the street in one direction. And then I, the sidewalk's all backed up because there's just, like, this really sad, dejected-looking guy with his head kind of down, slowly ambling down the street to whatever whatever job it is that he clearly hates that he's going to um, as, you know, a fucking line of people, um, you know, equally annoyed that they're going to, uh, to occupations that are slowly killing them, uh, walk down the sidewalk behind him. And uh, this so as this song is playing and I'm thinking like, this is what every asshole who fucking, who loves New York city needs to see. This is, this is real New York City. It's not the lights is blinding. The the lights of of a fucking an MTA bus are blinding before they run you over, or a fucking cab jumps the curb, or that guy who uh, a guy ran over a bunch of people the other day in uh, in I think the same neighborhood as this. He got drunk at brunch and he just fucking drove up on a curb and ran a bunch of people over. Groups of people get run over all the time in New York City. Like you really have to pay attention pretty much. You have to be on edge and ready to uh, nimbly save your own life at any given moment when you are out and about on the streets of Manhattan. And then if you're in a building, um, the building itself may just become your tomb for any number of reasons. It's really just uh, the city is just a big fucking death trap, really. Anyway. Come check it out. Get yourself a nice I Love New York uh, coffee mug or hoodie. It's fun. Ah, now I see the uh, the comment section is is waking up. Good to see you fellas here, except for Hager. Um, Gusso, all the all the boys. Yes, nighttime. It does. Uh, it does have a, a certain DMX feel to it. But I believe DMX was from the Bronx, uh, a a grittier neighborhood than Chelsea. Chelsea is literally. This is a neighborhood where this this was. This occurred in a neighborhood that is most well known for um, homo homosexual theater fans uh, going to brunch. That is what goes on, on in Chelsea. Stephen Mason, welcome to the party. And all the boys. Good, good to see you, fellas. Um, well, enough about... Enough about this nightmare city. And on to the next uh, the next thing I wanted to share. Also quite irritating is uh, 
this. One sec. Here we go. Bud Light. Make it a Bud Light. So it's only 30 seconds long. So what I'll do is I'll play it, we'll watch it, and then I will tell you why I hate this commercial. Volume up to a reasonable level. It is. Cold beer on a Friday night, a pair of jeans that fit just right, and the radio. All right. I mean, aside from the fact that I going to a, a this country music festival, I would go to a country music festival uh, in under the right circumstances, like somewhere Alabama, Georgia. So you know, somewhere where it's really worth it and it's it's what the people do. This group, though, looks like you know these people probably. Let me see if I can get a good group shot of these dickheads. Is this uh come on. Give me give me a good give me a good group shot. These fucking assholes. This is it, right here. Like these uh, they all look like they work in fucking finance or whatever in you know lower Manhattan. They live in they live in Red Hook. The tickets to this thing probably cost five hundred dollars each. These are not country music fans. Like this is after after Bud Light infuriated, and I'm I, upon researching this, I just saw this commercial for the first time the other day. This is apparently a few weeks old already, um, but I hated it so much. Um, after going out of its way to alienate its hardcore drinking base um, with the whole Dylan Mulvaney thing. And then the marketing chick coming out and being like, look, the reason we did that is because we think the people who consume our product are a bunch of ignorant shitheads. And we'd like to appeal to, to other, other consumers. Uh, after all of that and taking the massive, massive, um, uh, financial hit that they did, they roll this fucking bullshit out. Um, like, like this is literal this feels like this feels like your parents you know after like after they go off on you they yell at you for something or whatever and then they try to like they try to be you know cool and young and they you know they ask you about like hey so what you know how's that new like boys to men album and it's you know it's fucking you're a teenager in, in 2012. That's just, they thought that was relatable. Like this is just such a, a poor attempt. This is, not, if you look at this, this group right here, this group of people had no fucking problem with the Dylan Mulvaney thing. Like this group of people at, at their happy hours when that stuff, they, this is the kind of uh, crowd that drinks the Bud Light to support them because the MAGA people are mad. Like these are not, these are not the people who were taking out AR-15s and, uh, you know, putting fucking uh, plastic explosives on their, their Bud Light cases and then firing at them in front of a lake. Like, this is this is the New York City, Hillary, Biden, you know, proud, you know, they pro wear fucking t-shirts to announce their vax status. Like, that's that's who these people are. That's... That's who this is. Um, and I can tell you that. I can confirm that for you because they're listening to this bullshit song. I fucking hate that song. That song sucks the biggest fucking dick. Chicken fried can lick my fucking balls oh oh there is nothing fucking worse than when you're at a fucking a bar this happens it happens at bar a 
down the shore all the time. I'm sure Thomas Hager has run into this. Thomas Hager is probably a huge chicken fried fan. Um, it happens at Bar A all the time. They love this fucking song. Um, and you, you get like just a bunch of fucking um, beer, you know, the... the I see a guy who's been drinking all day in the summer sun and he's just gets fucking real. It's usually like one of the Irish guys in the group. They get real fucking sunburnt and emotional late at night. They've been fucking drinking whiskey and, and Bud Light all fucking day. Um, and it's like around like a holiday weekend, especially like Memorial Day, 4th of July, which is very patriotic. Uh, and this song makes them think about like how much they fucking they love. They love America and all that bullshit, and they, they start getting a little misty-eyed, and if they if they have a girlfriend or something, they'll, they'll hug them big on, nothing like perverted, like they won't try to do fucking finger them up her, up her jean shorts or something fun like that, they'll like put an arm around them and like maybe like a kiss on the top of the head, and it's just fucking nauseating, and, um, but if, you know, if you socialize amongst m millennials and you go out and drink, this is very much of my gender, I don't know if I think Gen X probably a little too cynical for it, and and Gen Z, I I don't I don't know what the fuck they do. They don't do anything. They hang out. They they hang out on their phones is what they do. I don't know. I see every article I see says that they don't like to come. Um, so this is very much uh, a critique of the uh, millennial social scene, um, of course, of which uh, of which I am a part. Um, this is like, it's like the residue of the, uh, the fun of the post nine 11 era is, is this, this is like what it morphed into. It just, it kept drinking. It drank too much and, uh, it stopped working out. And then the fucking, the booze went from fueling bar fights to growing fucking man tits and, and beer tears. And it's very sad. Um, and then they go into the, uh, they go I guess they're, they're going into the going into the show. They're all they. It's raining, but they got their tents. The rain's not going to ruin their tailgate or whatever the fuck this is. There's that other uh, that other song. What is it? Uh, fucking. Uh, I think it's Darius Rucker. Wagon wheel. Same fucking shit goes on when that, I fucking, I have no room for this, this very, very clearly like corporate country is just awful because it's not that the music, like you could listen to it, but like, all right, like whatever. Like, it's just a, it's a, clearly a country song made for a pop audience. Like, okay, I, I, I accept that this, there's, it, it can be moderately pleasing to hear once and you're like okay yeah that's i get it if you were going to make a pop country song that is in fact what it would sound like my problem with it is that people in like new york city shouldn't be behaving as though they are country it's that to me is the worst personality feature when you're living in an urban area in like the north basically out of Outside, if you're not in the fucking heartland, if you're in the heartland, country music till your heart's content. Same thing if you're in the if you're in the south. Other than like, I think we have to include like that. You know, chunks of of the American South, like the Miami and et cetera, where uh, northern Italians and and Jews have sort of taken over the the landscape and like Latinos and and whatnot coming up uh no longer country um you i think it's one of those things where it's like pornography right uh if you know i know it when i see it i know a place where it's appropriate to listen to country music when i when i encounter it and a bunch of you know this fucking crowd th this these shitheads the fucking Whoever the fuck they are, the you know, the marketing team from a startup down in Tribeca here, these are not country people. Like this is not this is not who this is. This is who this shitty fucking song applies to. That they would like this song. And they'd be like, Yeah, I'm a big country music fan. But what's your 
What's your favorite song? Oh, Chicken Fried. Oh, you big fucking country music. Yeah, look at you. Regular fucking Johnny Cash. Fucking, I hope... I'd be drinking enough of those Bud Lights to, to get a DUI with a vehicular homicide and you, you wind up getting sent to Folsom Prison and Rogered in the buttocks repeatedly. Um, just terrible. Terrible stuff. Uh, so Bud Light deserves deserves all of the shit that they get. Yes, nighttime conqueror. This is uh, this is exactly the kind of guy that I'm I'm talking about here. He just, for whatever reason, this is it. Just a, there's just a certain type of guy who an evening on the town elicits the worst of emotions. Can't just be about going out and having a good time. He has to. It has to be some sort of cathartic experience. Yeah, I don't understand that. That I don't fucking quit ruining the fun. We're just trying to we're just trying to have a good time here, guy. <laughs> yeah, don't get caught. <laughs> don't get taught. Don't get caught deflating any football. <laughs> Oh, I fucking <laughs> El Guso Bell is always welcome in in this comment section. <laughs> um, all right. Let me uh let me get this one out of here. Or can I uh let me get just get the next thing up. Here he is. Share this tab instead. The Supreme Gentleman. Let me just get this, uh, let me get this Doug Bell comment <laughs> off the screen. This is Elliot Roger, the Supreme Gentleman. Um, and the reason he's on here. We have a big problem in this country. Big, big problem. Why more U.S. men are falling victim to Japan's antisocial hikikomori trend. You heard it. That's right, fellas. Big problem. In Japan, an estimated 1.5 million people, among them, uh, many of them young men, now live in complete isolation. I'm sorry, isolation. The uh, the problem has grown so severe that the Japanese have a term for it, hikikomori, one who literally withdraws from society. Some, some 6,000 miles away, the United States is experiencing its own form of hikikomori. Uh, what they're saying is that we are a country full of uh, low-T cucks. Um, and I am... Uh, I'm surprised that this is a problem in Japan. I lived in Japan for a few years and they don't really, they don't give off the cuck vibe. Um, but I will say that was, I left Japan to come back to the U S in 2011 and American men weren't really acting like a bunch of cucks back then either. Right. It was still, we were still on the, uh, the post nine 11 sort of high when we were all drunk as fuck and we were ready to kill the Taliban all the time. It was fun. It was good, good, that amped up macho patriotism where, uh, you just want, you know, if it looked like it was from the wrong part of the world, you were willing to put your fist through it. Um, it was a good time. Um, but, uh, then Occupy Wall Street came along and this cuck stuff really took off. Like that was when people uh, people started to kind of take notice of like the fucking lib cuck pussy dudes. Like the, you know, you know what kind of guys I'm talking about. Like the kind of guys who were at Occupy and they were really there just trying to get laid. Like the guys who went to Occupy looking for pussy. Uh, those guys have just evolved into like half the fucking male landscape. 
has decided that their best their best bet to settle down and procreate is to is to act like it was the greatest tragedy of their life when Hillary Clinton lost the election um because that is that is the only thing they can present to a woman uh, they don't have uh they don't have tea they're a bunch of low tea cucks um and being a low tea cuck really really took off um and there's another there's another low tea bunch who's uh perhaps not i'm trying to think of the way to describe them because these guys the uh, the, the occupy wall street uh cucks those are like the, uh, you know, if you push them to their farthest extreme, they become like Antifa. These cucks, or these low T guys, are the ones who, when pushed to their farthest extreme, uh, go incel and, like, shoot up a fucking mall. Um, which also seem to take off around the same time. Um, so whatever it is, that was really when America lost its erection, uh, during a recent interview with Chris Williamson, a British podcaster based, I like Chris Williamson's show. It's a good show. Interesting interviews. The political economist, Nicholas Eberstadt discussed the fact that 7 million men of prime working age are currently without employment and not seeking jobs. Many of these men said Eberstadt, spend inordinate amounts of time indoors, totally withdrawn from society. They play video games, watch pornography, and tend to engage in heavy drug use, according to the author of Men Without Work. Um, Actually, I watched part of this interview um, before I saw this article, uh, but it's probably the best argument against universal basic income, right? If If you just give dudes a bunch of money to do nothing... We will sit around all day masturbating, playing video games, and smoking weed. Like, we can't fucking help ourselves. Um, And that, I think, is part of the reason that lockdown was such a fucking disaster. Um, Like, we went out of our way to give a bunch of 90-year-olds a few extra weeks to live uh, while we inadvertently fired a cannonball into the mental health of an entire population of young men. Um... Because if you didn't have the presence of mind to use that 24-month house arrest that everybody was on to kind of improve yourself, then the whole thing just wound up being a massive setback because you were either filling the time, like, you know, you'd do your work and then you, you know, couldn't really fucking do anything. So you either filled the time, like, working out, reading, like, you know, improve, like, learning a skill, learning to, to cook or whatever the fuck, um, or you spent the entire time jerking off to only fans smoking weed and playing video games. Um, and if you spend 24 straight months doing that and you just kind of fall into the comfort of what that can be like the very numbing comfort of, of the feedback, uh, that comes from all of those things. It's really, really, um, possible that your new life from here forth because of uh being stuck inside like that is just going to be uh that of a a schlubby dude who sit here in inside drinking soda watching your fucking gut just slowly it softens softens soften and then all of a sudden it extends past your penis uh and then you're seeing hot chicks posting fucking ass cheek shots on on instagram and they're on a beach somewhere and what's going to happen is uh, a percentage of those guys are just going to continue to melt into that. And that's just going to be their life forever. And they're going to become kind of like the castrati, right? Like they're just, they're so, so emasculated and just, they're not even emasculated. They're, it's just that they're, any sex hormone within them. Cause they'll, like, eventually I think they'll even stop jerking off because sexual does like their, you know, physical, uh, com- uh, composure, uh, their own physiology, I think will eliminate their sexual desire. Um, and they, you just go more and more and more into kind of just like a, a 
a fucking whale who sits on the the couch consuming uh, simple carbohydrates. But there's also a sliver out of that group um, that will, I feel like, go on the in the other direction, where they go towards like QAnon and they're looking at fucking, they're looking at shit online and they're the ones who start like they're like, well. Well, how come I'm not getting any of it? There's all this great pussy on Instagram. I'm not getting any of it. And they're like, they're the ones who are like, you know, get sending threatening messages to women on social media. And then, you know, the, the rage just builds and they go instead of becoming sort of um, anesthetized by that lifestyle, it, it, it turns into a stimulant for them. The same way like Adderall for some people puts them through the fucking roof and other people it helps like settle down. I think it's it's sort of uh, sort of similar work carried out by academics at Kyushu University in Japan has found that a low testosterone level is one of the common metabolic signatures of hikikomori in young social recluses, which is important to note because testosterone levels among young American men are plummeting and have been for years. The drop now reportedly affects one in four men in the U.S. It's commonly assumed that testosterone fuels antisocial behavior. In December, Avatar director James Cameron made headlines when he claimed that testosterone is a toxin that needs to be worked out of one system. Last month, NPR discussed the association between toxic masculinity and testosterone. There is no group of people on this planet, by the way, that I distrust more than the toxic masculinity people. Uh, To be sure, there are men with toxic personalities. Uh, everyone has been to a barbecue where some guy gets like embarrassingly drunk and bad mouths his own wife and family or, or uh, fucking, uh, you know, at a little league game, some guy, he wants to like strangle the fucking umpire over, he doesn't like the strike zone. So he's, he's threatening to, to find the umpire in the parking lot. Like they, those guys who they think the solution to things is to like fly into a rage because to them rage is how you solve a problem. I find those guys, I find those guys to be absolutely fucking hilarious, but their personality defects have nothing to do with testosterone. Like those guys are just fucking assholes. Like those are just, they just have shitty personalities. Um, you know, if we look at guys who I would call high testosterone, I'm thinking of like Jim Mattis, The Rock, Arnold Schwarzenegger, Joe Rogan, Jocko Willink. You know, those guys all very high testosterone levels, I would imagine. Um, and they've probably never been seen berating a waiter for slightly delayed service, right? They've never, they've never been at like a fucking a Denny's or an IHOP going ballistic on the hostess because it's taking them too long to get seated. Um, I frankly, the people who I think are most often uh, act like the, the biggest jerk offs with other people are usually the low T cucks who can't handle their shit. Um, and I think the reason like I cucks, absolutely cucks are the ones who are doing these fucking toxic masculinity articles, right? They do, they're the ones who don't like like high testosterone fucking alpha bros because the cucks got bullied in high school and and I don't mean like actual bullying because there's a difference between bullying and what gets called bullying. To me, bullying is like a targeted, much more emotional than it is physical thing. And it's meant to to torment and ruin a person's life. And it's really, if we're being honest, it's really more of chick, it's a chick behavior. It's chicks bully. Boys, as they grow into teenagers and men, start do start to develop more testosterone, ideally, which makes them a, a bit more physical and they're competitive and they're aggressive, right? And adults have, have outlets for this kind of stuff, right? You can get if you're a high testosterone dude, you can get that that energy out in appropriate ways, surfing, mixed martial arts, CrossFit, fucking, you know, you find a, a men's football, rugby league, raise a family. Uh, all those things are good, healthy outlets for testosterone. Children, teenagers, kids, college guys don't have the mental skill set to sort out uh, appropriate testosterone-driven dri behavior like 
fucking scoring a touchdown, bench pressing more than your buddy, or getting blown by a cheerleader, right? Those are those are good ways to apply your testosterone. Um, there are inappropriate ways to apply your testosterone, like take pantsing some nerd and tossing his undies into the girl's locker room is fucking it, hilarious to do when you're a teenager, but it's not a healthy outlet for your testosterone, right? Objectively, as an adult, I can say you shouldn't take the nerd shorts and throw them into the fucking girl's locker room, even though at 17, I would have been in tears laughing if if I had seen that happen. Um, so what happens is uh, everyone is is up and down the testosterone spectrum. You have kids, teenagers who have more of it act in more sort of brutal ways because they haven't learned how to contain themselves yet. Um, so they just, they're rolling around. If you're a teenage boy with fucking high testosterone, you're just rolling around on this fucking incredible drug all day, ready to do wild shit at the drop of a fucking hat. Like it, that that's what, that's part of the re- like high school football is very entertaining because there's a degree to which all of the players are on steroids. Like they're all fucking, they're just little psychos. They fucking run into each other because they're all juiced up on fucking uh, natural testosterone and then, you know, whatever uh, stimulants they're buying at GNC. Um, you know, um, but it's just not a social, like that. that's why you have kids play those sports is to get that out, right? You're trying to get them to fucking run it off. Otherwise, like if there wasn't fucking like, football and wrestling and shit for high school dudes there would be people would just get fucking brutalized in the hallways um but what these fucking these pussies at npr don't really understand is that those guys weren't doing it it wasn't out of any like toxicity they just that's the way they interact with each other like if you hang out with a group of fucking jocks every it's constant one-upmanship Everyone's trying to beat everyone. Everyone's trying to like fuck the hotter chick or like outperform or out whatever, out fucking drink. If you're if you're out if you're out there vandalizing, everyone's trying to out vandalize, do the craziest fucking thing. Um, you know, I went to Jamaica with a bunch of my my college football and track buddies, and there was there's this cliff at this place, Rick's American uh, Cafe or some fucking shit in the grill. Uh, that everyone jumps off and it's like 30 40 feet fucking high it's a it's a potential death jump um and every fucking guy that went on the trip jumped off of this thing because nobody wanted to be the fucking pussy uh who didn't jump off the cliff uh and that's like that's the daily reality for for got like for that sort of subset of the population and i think it get it as you get older, um, it it tapers off to a nice, sustainable, like healthy surge of of rock hard erections. Like you get older and you're like, all right, good. I'm no longer, I like I no longer feel the need to jump off of a cliff into the ocean. I'm happy with having a good refractory period and and a nice deadlift. Um, but as a teenager, you just don't know how to fucking deal with that. And I think that's when that's when these NPR pussies kind of make their, uh, draw their conclusions about testosterone and like jocks and shit. Um, the, this belief is not supported by science. There's no strong evidence suggests that men with higher levels of testosterone are overly aggressive or violent. On the contrary, testosterone has been linked to more social behavior in males, while low testosterone levels in males are associated with social anxiety and socially submissive or avoidant behaviors. People with social anxiety are at an increased risk of developing depression. Moreover, according to the Cleveland Clinic, low testosterone levels often mimic symptoms of depression. Yeah, again, go figure. This is why, and this is why I have the Supreme Gentleman up on the screen. The guys shooting up malls and grocery stores and what have you are are incels, right? Guys with high testosterone will go out and chase pussy, right? You don't always, you're not guaranteed a hundred percent chance of landing it, but you are happy to have a good time going. The idea of chasing pussy is a lot of fun to you. Um, and if you're going out and you're involved, like 
you're having a good time chasing puss, you're probably not going to shoot up a bunch of innocent people because the consequences of doing so would get in the way uh, of, of pounding any, any pussy. Um, so what happens is it's, uh, it's the sad boys who aren't out. They're not out in the mix socially. They might, if, they, if they go out, they're kind of like the creep who like stares at a woman for an hour from across the bar before a, approaching. And then, you know, the chick has to like make up a lie about being engaged. She doesn't have a, she doesn't have a ring on. It's a whole fucking uh, thing. She just saw him like grabbing some other guy's cock. Um, but those are the guys, the sad boys uh, who feel rejected by society because other people are getting laid. They're the ones who lash out. So we should in theory be encouraging more testosterone to avoid mass shootings. In fact, if everyone was get, if everyone was getting their dick sucked or if the weekend at least held with it, the possibility of getting one's dick sucked, I think we can confidently say that uh, there would be a, a steep drop off in the frequency of rampage shootings in the United States. Uh, research carried out by Dr. David Turberg, an expert in human behavior, has shown the many ways in which testosterone improves both individual behavior and broader cooperation. One study, Turberg and his colleagues identified a clear association between the administration of testosterone, and increased levels of social cooperation, better moral judgment. Of course, this is clear to anyone. If you've ever played a sport or been in the military, uh, these are both, you know, football again and the military, very high testosterone activities. They require you to abide by a set of rules and, and codes of conduct and, and work as part of a team. Uh, so it's very, very clear that high testosterone is a, a huge, uh, you know, to societal uh, positive, low testosterone, otherwise known as hypogonadism was associated with brain fog, poor memory and focus, and overall lack of mental clarity. Men lacking testosterone also had an increased risk of developing noticeably larger breasts, a condition known as gynecomastia, bitch tits. Bob had bitch tits. Um, yeah. That's it. I mean, that the answer is clear, right? Don't be, don't be a fucking cuck. <laughs> <laughs> that's I don't know I don't know uh what to uh what what better takeaway there could possibly be than than that uh let me uh let me get the fucking let me get this out of here supreme gentleman um let's see there they are. Hello, ladies. I'm reading an old Hager comment, and I can't figure out what it's in reference to. Nor should I care, by the way. Good to have you here. Good good to have you here, Hager. Um, Nighttime Conqueror, you hopping on the uh, the tart cherry juice band, bandwagon? Good for you. Good for you. Get, um, get yourself uh, some club soda. You make yourself a nice little spritzer. It's delicious. Throw in some lime juice. Can't go wrong. Did you, how did you lower your testosterone fighting? I'm confused by the logic there. Enlighten me, sir. My friend pantsed my gym teacher in high school. I would, nothing would bring me more joy than to have seen my high school gym teacher get pants. We had, well, I mean, a very, a very specific one because it would have been hilarious. And he seems like the kind of guy who would have gotten pants. Um, 
We also had some cool ones. We had one who was a, a door gunner on a helicopter in Vietnam. That guy was badass. And then we had like the usual roundup of lesbians. He did it in front of the grade 10 girls gym class and got suspended for a month. Is this, uh, I can never tell. I never, I never know if something from TV or a movie is getting snuck by me. Cause it's one of my favorite things to do to people. Uh, and this, like this feels so much like it could be something that Bart Simpson did that. I don't know, but I'm going to, again, I'm just going to, I'm going to live in it. I'm going to love that it uh, that it either happened or happened in, in a script somewhere, and we're going to enjoy it. Just an ode to pantsing. Thank you, Nighttime Conqueror. Dustin Landry, um, Tart Cherry counter, counteracts hypogonadism. Uh, tart Cherry Juice is, uh, it is a vasodilator, so it gets your blood flow going. I don't know what the fuck else it does, but it's also delicious, and I think it might be good for your prostate as well. Um, in any case, I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoy it. I love a nice Tart Cherry. Bust it right open, know what I'm saying, boys? All right. Any, uh, anything else, uh, interesting, uh, in here? Pitbull is business casual rap. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, Pitbull, I feel like is, you know, he's useful for what he is, right? It's. If if you if you want a song with that sort of energy to it to be played in an environment where people aren't into real electronic music or like real club music, that you you play you play Pitbull. Like that's that's what it's for. It's for it's for moms in flyover country to to shake their butts on the dance floor at a wedding. Okay. What do you say we wrap her up? I have a couple steaks to cook, and uh, I gotta go check in on the Mets. They've lost like five games in a row. It's an absolute fucking disaster. Anyway. Anyway. Um, what do I usually do here? Oh, yeah, this is where I tell you. Uh, I remind you to follow me uh, all over the place at Mike's Golden Streams on uh, YouTube or just search for SACTAP Live. Tell your friends, please. Uh, Instagram at Gary underscore Moiler, M-O-Y-L-E-R. Twitter at Mike Montone, uh, Facebook.com slash The Savage Crew. Um, not sure. Hopefully live next week. I don't know what the... Uh, I don't know what the plans are. I think they're I think I'm doing something, so probably a pre-record, but not positive. Uh it be it be the summertime, so there's a lot going on. Y'all know how it is. All right. Adios, motherfuckers.